Hi, this is Libby. And this is Roberta. And this is Art Blog Radio. We're speaking today with Mesa Hickson, who's the new curator at Delaware Center for the Arts. Delaware Center for the, for the Contemporary, Contemporary Arts. Arts. She arrived in Philadelphia's consciousness last summer with a splash with a show called new Young Country, a group show she curated. Hickson lives in Philadelphia. She was born in Greensburg, Kentucky. We want to find out how her transition to the Northland is coming along and a little bit about her life. Tell us, you just inaugurated the city's smallest exhibition space. At least that's what we think it is. Um, it's the shaft in an elevator at 319 North 11th Street, which we keep referring to as the Vox Building. Who do you see using that space with? What artists or what kind of art? Or Right, well, the shaft gallery is an unauthorized gallery space that is curated by my artistic collaborator, Lauren Ruth, and, and I. So we have programmed a series of exhibitions for the space that deal with themes of interactivity, participation, and non-object-based art, essentially programming the space with experiences. And uh, the space is all about access. You know, the idea of elevating uh, an unauthorized space to a higher level, so to speak, to be tongue-in-cheek, uh, is the central focus. So we're looking at lots of different proposals. We've gotten a proposal to have someone do elevator music for the shaft. And, you know, we thought about concepts of the basic function of the space and playing with them, toying with them. It was a very raw space, a very dirty space. And um, for people who live in the building, a really unfortunate area within the building that we kind of thought of as a necessary evil. So when we, when Lauren and I transformed the space, we added drywall, crown molding, um, we painted the space white, and we turned it into a white cube, essentially. Uh, so, and the floor, too. And the floor was replaced, yes, with, with wood. And so essentially, you know, we tried to re-signify the, the elevator as a, as a gallery space, as a kind of uh, pristine white cube and we added a, all the things that you need for a perfect opening. You need a white pedestal, and some vinyl lettering with the title of the show, and a curatorial statement. You need all the necessary components of a museum exhibition. So talk about the, the level of whimsy and playfulness in this project because it seems like as a curator um, you have been doing things that are, are serious, very serious, but could be taken a little whimsically or perhaps as even ironic. My curatorial process evolved out of thinking about the traditional art historical lecture as a kind of really dead-end way of getting people excited about art, frankly. And, you know, taking those survey courses in college for the uninitiated art history or art, the study of art, could seem like a very moribund or, you know, boring, dull experience. I set out to challenge my own role as a curator and to call attention to myself as an unreliable narrator. You know, most people see it as a position of power or a position which you confer status upon an artist. It has typically been associated with the idea of connoisseurship. But in fact, anyone can be a curator. Anyone can decide, you know, that they want to see a certain thing and they have the ability to, to make decisions and to, to become the tastemaker if they want. So in my, my work, I try, to, I try to make people aware of the fact that they have access to the role. In terms of being a tastemaker, what is your own taste? <laughs> Well, as you can probably tell, I, I do really like non-object-based art. I enjoy relational art, um, social experience as art. Can you give some examples? Absolutely. I'm really interested in Anton Vidokel's work. He did a project for the New Museum that was an exhibition as school as work of art called Night School, trying to make an exhibition as a biennial, I believe, trying to think of an exhibition space or an exhibition not so much for the display of objects but for the idea of experience. It, you know, that comes out of a tradition of, of performance of the dematerialized art object, um, programmed night school with discussion, with conversation, and, um, you know, it was about creating information, creating a dialogue 
with other people. I'm also interested in interactive new media and video art. I really enjoy the work of Phil Collins, not the singer from Genesis. Um, I, in the past, have curated a show uh, called American Idol, Contemporary Art and Karaoke. The whole exhibition idea was based upon the rise of the amateur in contemporary art. And so I designated the, the gallery space as a makeshift stage in which people could become the stars of their own reality show in the form of an exhibition. And so who came in to participate in your reality TV show, <laughs> Karaoke? Well, it was funny because one of the artists in the show was a local video karaoke jockey, KJ, named Joel Armour. And he had been doing karaoke jockey nights at this bar called Waltz in Cincinnati, which was on the river. I invited him to essentially create, recreate Walt's bar in the context of the exhibition. And then, of course, his clientele followed him because they were loyal supporters of his and they grew to know him. Um, so a lot of those people came and, you know, they weren't necessarily interested in contemporary art, but they found themselves singing and then looking around and realizing that, you know, there was more than met the eye. Really? You turned yes. them into re repeat customers? Yes, yes, definitely. A, a project that came out of the first project I was invited to manage when I first got a curatorial job at the Contemporary Arts Center in Cincinnati. I was assigned the um, role of project manager for Tom Marioni's free beer exhibition. He's a West Coast conceptual artist. I got to go out to his uh, studio in San Francisco and attend one of his Free Beer Wednesday events in which he opens, opens up a studio and turns it into a kind of uh, beer bar. And I learned a lot from him. You know, I learned about the idea of experience being a, a form of almost invisible sculpture. And, of course, it was also wonderful because I got paid to drink free beer. So I thought, well, how can I, you know, how can I then get paid to drink free beer and also do my other favorite thing, which is sing? That's when I got the idea to curate American Idol, contemporary art and karaoke. So can you sing for us? Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Maybe I should just preface my song by saying that Dolly Parton has been a huge influence on me because for my master's thesis, I was looking for a way to talk about contemporary art through a particular idiom or a, a figure someone could recognize I designated Dolly Parton as the character. You know, she has this song, I think it's a Porter Wagner song, which is called The Mystery of the Mystery. Life is a subjective experience, and great minds can try, but they will not find the answer to the mystery in their mind. And so maybe Dolly Parton could be a, a great art critic. One may never know. So anyway. There are so many things that I don't understand. And I search my mind to try and find an answer. But the more I search, the less I seem to find out why. Like where the wind blows, how does life begin? What happens when we die? The mystery of the mystery must stay unknown. Only God may know, but man must not see. Great minds have tried, but they will not find the answer to a mystery in their mind. <laughs> a little rusty. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Amazing. So I think you're right about Dolly Parton. That's she's quite a pretty a good song. art critic. Oh, yeah. Well, she's also a pretty wild lady. <laughs> I mean, she's got a lot of ideas, that woman. So yes. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, she's a great figure. She's very complex, how she uses her her role as a, a character, and she knows what she's doing. She stages her own, her own um, image. I want to know about your own growing up. Well, let's see. I, I have, you know, a little experience in rural places. My grandparents moved to Louisville, and then in 74, a tornado hit Louisville, and uh, basically they were forced to relocate, and they settled upon a 285-acre farm just about an hour south of Louisville. So my parents were back-to-the-land hippies, and I grew up in a 
100-year-old log cabin for the first two years of my life. Um, and now with so many artists dealing with the issue of farming or, you know, privileging ideas of nature in their work, I think it's, I think it's something that I really care about and that I try to make people aware of in my own work. So what happened after the, uh, the log cabin? <laughs> Well, my parents, you know, my parents divorced, and um, my mom moved me to Cincinnati, and my dad uh, was painting. He was a painter. He went to the Philadelphia College of Art, which is now the University of the Arts, and um, so he continued to, you know, to stay on the farm, and I would often visit, and, uh, and then I, you know, essentially I grew up in Cincinnati, but I always had the farm as a place to bring my friends or, you know... Um, just have access to, and so we, we've spent a lot of time there. When you're making art, what sort of art do you make? <laughs> I, I like drawing. I'm, I've worked in a lot of different media. I've made video art. I've done photography. I started out as a painter. So in many ways, I try to incorporate a lot of different you know, media into, into my curatorial work. And the most recent video I did was called, um, it's a curatorial consultation, and it was a performance I did at Vox for the opening of their performance space. I essentially interviewed people on their responses to some of the images in the Young Country show. That became a kind of introduction to, you know, concepts like, do you think people in Philadelphia would give up Trader Joe's to move to a farm? But people would actually answer them in all seriousness, you know, we want to have access to all uh, natural experience and a whole experience, so to speak, but I don't know how many people in the city would actually give up Trader Joe's to move to a farm. And how about you? (laughs) (laughs) Would you? (laughs) Um, Yes, I would. I actually lived on a llama farm um, for a little while with a friend of mine who was a ceramics person and... um, we lived on a llama farm for a little while, in Indiana, actually. And did you take care of the llamas? Was this an actual working experience for you? No, it wasn't. You were a gentle lady farmer. <laughs> it was a gentle lady farmer experience, I guess. <laughs> yes. Well, that's it, uh, Mesa. Thank you so much. We've been talking with Mesa Hickson, uh, curator for the DCCA, and many other wonderful things, and an artist. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Art Blog Radio is brought to you by theartblog.org. Thanks to our sponsors, including the Knight Foundation. Also, we want to thank Peter Crimmins, who makes us sound good. He's our editor. And thanks to Eric Biondo for his music. You can download these podcasts at theartblog.org slash radio.